O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Welcome to Evening Prayer, coming to you from London, Ontario, Canada, an outreach ministry of the Church of the Ascension. Wherever you may be this evening, please feel free to bring your prayer, needs, and concerns to our time of prayer together. Today is Monday, the 9th of August. We're in the week of the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. We want to take a little bit of a look at what is being observed today. And before we go right into that, I want to say that uh, this is the one day this week without a commemoration on the church calendar. But I did Saturday miss a commemoration that is of uh, the commemoration of John Mason Neal who died on the 6th of August, 1866. But his commemoration day is moved to the 7th because the 6th is always observed as the day of transfiguration. He was an English Anglican priest, scholar, hymn writer, and hymn translator. We can thank him for such familiar hymns as All Glory, Laud, and Honor, Good Christian Men Rejoice, Good King Wenceslas, and O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. He wrote literally hundreds of hymns, uh, and many others uh, are in hymnals from various places, but I thought these would be the most familiar to you. And we give thanks for the creative and musical and rhyming genius of John Mason Neal. Now, looking at some things being observed, this is Melon Day. Uh, thinking of melons like cantaloupe, honeydew, and, uh, and muskmelon. This celebration originated in Turkmenistan, a Central Asian country bordered by the Caspian Sea, where melons are a big deal, and especially a melon called the Turkmen melon. Uh, hundreds of varieties are grown in Turkmenistan, and the people there are very proud of them. Uh, I enjoy melons, and in recent years, I have discovered and very much enjoy canary melons and Santa Claus melons. This is also Book Lover's Day, another day certainly for me. I believe you can never have too many books. I have such pleasant memories of trips with my family to the library, even as a small child. I have wonderful memories of my parents and grandparents reading books to me, and I always enjoyed reading time in literature classes in school. Every now and then in the colder months, we, uh, we record these uh, evening prayer services in the library section of my study, and people have made note of I have a lot of books there. Well, actually, you're seeing only a portion of my library, and when I retired, I gave a lot of books away. Uh, and still don't have enough shelf space for all of them. And finally, it is Rice Pudding Day. Rice puddings are found in nearly every area and culture of the world, and the recipes can vary a lot, even within a single country. I love rice pudding in most forms. I've mentioned before that we had an exchange student living with us for a year from Finland, Antti Niskanen, and when he was with us on Christmas Day, uh, I dug out a Scandinavian cookbook and found a recipe for Finnish rice pudding, or risi puro, as it's called in Finnish. And it's customary on, uh, on Christmas Day to include an almond in it, and whoever gets the almond is considered especially fortunate and receives another small gift. So, Following the recipe as closely as I could, I had risi puro for Christmas Day breakfast. Auntie, our student, was thrilled, and as he was eating it amid tears, he told us it was just like his mumus, the Finnish word for grandmother. So uh, seeing his rice pudding day brings back pleasant memories. Uh, one of my favorite restaurants often has rice pudding available. If, uh, if someplace has rice pudding, I will usually ask for it rather than any other dessert. Well, with that as background, let us say our prayers. Today is Monday. I like to you to consider Monday as Memory Monday and go down memory lane using the familiar words of the Book of Common Prayer. O 
O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our psalm today is Psalm 19. I think it's a familiar psalm, and especially the last verse will sound very familiar to you. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. One day telleth another, and one night certifieth another. There is neither speech nor language, their voice cannot be heard. Yet their sound is gone out into all the lands, and their words into the ends of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which cometh forth as a bridegroom out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a giant to run his course. It goes forth from the uttermost part of the heaven, and runneth about unto the end of it again, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is an undefiled law, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, and giveth wisdom unto the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, and giveth light unto the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, and endureth forever. The judgments of the Lord are true, and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant taught, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can tell how oft he hath offended? O cleanse thou me from my secret faults. Keep thy servant also from presumptuous sins, lest they get dominion over me. So shall I be undefiled and innocent from the great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We want to turn now to Scripture after our brief uh, break into the book of Romans yesterday. We return now to the book of the Acts of the Apostles and see what St. Luke has for us today. When we left off on Saturday, Paul and his traveling companions had made it to Miletus, uh, a harbor on the east coast of the Aegean Sea uh, in what is now called Asia Minor, the country of Turkey, uh, and he was hoping to make it to Jerusalem by the festival of the Pentecost. And so we begin in chapter 20 at verse 17. From Miletus, Paul sent a message to Ephesus, asking the elders of the church to meet him. When they came to the, him, he said to them, You yourselves know how I lived among you the entire time from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears, and during the trials that came to me through the plots of the Jews. I did not shrink from doing anything helpful, proclaiming the message to you, and teaching you publicly and from house to house, as I testified to both Jews and Greeks about repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus. And now, as a captive to the Spirit, I am on my way to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and persecutions are waiting for me. But I do not count my life of any value to myself, if only I may finish my course and the ministry I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the good news of God's grace. And now I know that none of you, among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom, will ever see my face again. Therefore, I declare to you this day 
that I am not responsible for the blood of any of you, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole purpose of God. Keep watch over yourselves and over all the flock, of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God that he obtained with the blood of his own Son. I know that after I have gone, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Some, even from your own group, will come distorting the truth in order to entice the disciples to follow them. Therefore, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to warn everyone with tears. Now I commend you to God and to the message of His grace, a message that is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver, or gold, or clothing. You know for yourselves that I work with my own hands to support myself and my companions. In all of this, I have given you an example that by such work we must support the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus. For he himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. When he had finished speaking, he knelt down with them all and prayed. There was much weeping among them all. They embraced Paul and kissed him, grieving especially because of what he had said, that they would not see him again. Then they brought him to the ship. I speak only for myself, but I think I speak for many other clergy friends of mine. One of the hardest jobs of a priest or pastor is saying goodbye to a congregation. Um, What does one say to say goodbye? One reflects upon the years there. Um, In my first parish, it was but three years, common in many cases, and then a couple of parishes, six years, and then more recently, 12 years and 12 years, and already 10 years plus at the Church of the Ascension. And no, this is not a lead-in to saying I'm planning to leave. I hope that there will be many more years uh, possible of service there. But we never know where God, through the Holy Spirit, is calling us to be of service. And Paul saw his life that way. But the Spirit also warned him, wherever he went, that there might be persecutions, that he had the risk of imprisonment. But Paul really wanted to say goodbye to the people of Ephesus. He had worked with them for three years. He knew them intimately. He he knew their stories. He, He knew their families. He had taught probably five or six days a week, in the rented rooms of a philosopher. He probably taught for several hours a day. One commentator estimated that he had probably, that Paul had probably taught for 1,500 hours in Ephesus. What all did he say that never got recorded for us? Actually, in this passage that I just read, we have the one speech of Paul that Luke has recorded for us. And scholars comment about how close it follows the constructions that Paul uses in his letters to the churches. So very similar. And so we can feel with comfort that this is authentically Paul talking to the people of Ephesus, the overseers those that he has called in. There were a number of reasons he did not want to return to Ephesus. There had been problems there. It was convenient for him to be at, uh, at the port at Miletus and for them to come to him. And it sounds as if a fairly good-sized contingent came. It would not have been that far to travel, uh, maybe a day's travel, and people seem to think nothing of traveling like that in Jesus' time. And so they came, and Paul told them about the times they had had together, how he had worked hard to share the gospel among them, in spite of setbacks, 
in spite, of spe in spite especially of their difficulties they had with the Jewish leadership. But he, he said very, uh, very solidly that he had worked among both Jews and Gentiles. In other words, Paul wanted the message to be shared with all people possible. And we remember how he had said that he, that because of his preaching and sharing of the word, that scarcely a person in all of Asia had not had opportunity to hear that word. Paul took his role as a missionary and an evangelist very seriously. But today, we find him speaking more as a pastor. A pastor with a pastoral heart and concern for a people and a congregation. And I know that feeling in leaving a congregation behind to go to another field of service. What will happen after I am gone? Will problems come up? Will disputes break out? What person will be following me in the ministry? It is very improper for a uh, departing clergy to attempt to influence who it may be that would follow him or her. Uh, it's just not right. Uh, I've had a few who uh, have hinted at churches that they have left that, oh, they would like to see me go there. Uh, maybe they feel that my style of ministry is similar to their style of ministry. Uh, Paul did not know who would be following him, and he feared that wolves would come in to use his phrase. Wolves from both outside, and more frighteningly, from inside the parish, the congregation. Those who, who would come to attempt to distort the word in one way or another. Paul also reminded them that during his time there, that he had not been seeking silver or gold or clothing. No, he said, I, I earn my work with my own hands. And we have already studied how Paul was a tent maker. He was proud of doing that, yet at the same time, he was moving about seeking offerings for the poor church in Jerusalem. And he made that point, always look after the weak, for, in the words of Jesus himself, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So Paul had so much he wanted to say to these overseers who had come down from Ephesus to the port city of Melita for their farewells. And these words that, that Luke has saved for us are so very caring and so very pastoral. He also had to tell them that they may never see him again. And, and Luke records that there was much weeping, much embracing, much kissing. Saying, hard, saying goodbye is very hard. It's very difficult. And I've never been one to be fond of long goodbyes. I would somehow rather wish just to go. Say, thank you, goodbye. But in fact, churches want to have a farewell dinner. They want to have a farewell service. Uh, those events are always bittersweet. Uh, I've pretty much been able to stay in touch with people from nearly every parish I served, except for the uh, folks from the, uh, the first uh, three years I was in ministry. Uh, and some of those now, uh, many of those have passed away. But those people will always be in our hearts and in our minds. And I hope that uh, this is the 501st opportunity that you've had to hear me. I've talked about parishes I've served. I have, I hope, never run down or said bad things about any parish where I was. For God has blessed me with some wonderful ministry opportunities. And it warms my heart to know that there are people from several parishes that I previously served that are regular followers of these services of evening prayer. We're going back some 40 years in terms of parishes where I have served and people are faithfully following this. In fact, I'm thinking now that we even go back 46 years. Uh, 
and I don't think there's anybody yet from that uh, that I'm Facebook friends with following, but I've gotten comments from so many people um, that have just wanted to say they, they tuned in, appreciated hearing me preach again. So, uh, Paul's farewell address to a church he dearly loved in Ephesus, but he said that he always spoke the truth, and he didn't hold back anything. If something needed to be said, he would say it. Uh, it's sometimes called speaking the truth in love, and that can be very hard for us clergy to, uh, to need to say things that may be uncomfortable for a parish to hear, but things that must be said for one reason or another. So let's take a moment now to look at this day in history. I try to look back to find those important things, things that I think might be of interest to you, certainly things that caught my attention. I try to be sure to have at least a little Canadian content every week, and some things that have to do with the history of the church, uh, and uh, to, to try to just uh, curate them for my edification and your edification. And so it was on this day in 1483 that the Sistine Chapel at the Vatican was opened. Uh, we can give thanks for the many people who have prayed there and have had their life blessed in one way or another by visiting the beautiful Sistine Chapel. In 1842, the uh, United States-Canada border was defined by the Webster-Ashburton Treaty, settling especially and once for all the main New Brunswick border dispute. In 1854, on this date, Henry David Thoreau uh, published Walden. Uh, about his life on that uh, little uh, pond community uh, in the woods. In 1898, Rudolf Diesel of Germany obtained a patent for his internal combustion engine, which later became known as the diesel engine. And a death of note on this date in 1933, uh, another hymn writer, we already remember John Mason Neal, and on this date, William H. Draper died at Clifton, Bristol, England. He had translated into English the hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King, that St. Francis of Assisi had written in Latin. One of my favorite hymns. Maybe you like that hymn also. Uh, and now one of those sad things we have to share. Uh, on this date in 1945, August the 9th, the United States dropped the second atomic bomb on Japan this time on the city of Nagasaki, destroying much of the city. The number of killed is estimated at anywhere between 60,000 and 80,000 people. The exact numbers will be impossible to find because the, the blast obliterated some bodies, essentially vaporized them, and disintegrated many of the records of the town. The bombing resulted in Japan's unconditional surrender and the end of the war in the Pacific. And a death of note, uh, Swiss German Nobel laureate novelist Hermann Hesse died on this date in 1962 at the age of 85. In 1966, on this day, Singapore separated from the Federation of Malaysia and gained its independence. I've had friends who have lived in uh, in Singapore, uh, one professor of mine uh, actually served for quite a few years as a professor at Trinity Seminary, an interdenominational seminary in Singapore, and I have friends from uh, Malaysia and a friend currently who lives in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. In 1974, Richard Nixon resigned the United States presidency and then Vice President Gerald Ford swore the oath of office to take his place as the 38th United States President. And a death of note from the music world on this day in 1975, Russian composer Dmitry Shostakovich died of lung cancer at the age of 68. Shostakovich was one of the most celebrated composers of the 20th century. He composed a wide variety of music, but is particularly remembered for his 15 symphonies, concertes, and chamber works. He also produced opera, ballets, and music for films. 
And so today we give thanks for all the musical contributions, the real musical genius of Dmitry Shostakovich. And in 1988, the Edmonton Oilers traded Wayne Gretzky to the LA Kings. The reported 15 to 20 million dollars changed hands in that trade. And with that little bit of sad news there at the end, let's now return to our evening prayers from the Book of Common Prayer. The Nook Dimittis. Lord, now let us thou, thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, word without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Now, as Jesus taught us, in each using the language of our choice, we pray the better words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee and do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make cleaner hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. The Colic for the Day. Let thy merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of thy humble servants, that they may obtain their petitions, make them ask such things as shall please thee. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A colic for peace. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that their hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we pause now in silence that we might pray our own prayers. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord, to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the life to come, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and those you love and those that you would pray for, today and always. Amen. It's been a very warm day today. The humidity has seemed high. A little bit of a breeze has come up as I've been doing the prayers. I hope that's not interfered much with the sound. I went for a, a morning bike ride, and uh, after an hour, I just was drenched from perspiration coming back. 
but I got it in um, 59 straight days of, of riding the bicycle now, uh, just really enjoying doing it. So, that uh, does uh, conclude these prayers. Thank you for being a part of them. Go now in peace. May the God of peace go with you. Amen.